Everyone knows that alcohol burns. Bartenders have for years been lighting shots topped by high-proof liquors like 151-proof rum on fire. But did you know that the alcohol content in many popular hand sanitizing solutions is the same as it is in the high-proof liquors that allow these shots to burn so easily? Welcome to Learn Something New by NFPA Journal. In this episode, we're going to be diving into hand sanitizer and some of the safety considerations that should be taken into account when storing this flammable liquid, especially in large quantities. It's something NFPA has been fielding a number of inquiries on for the past few weeks as the coronavirus pandemic continues to sweep the globe and paper goods, cleaning supplies, and disinfectants, including hand sanitizer, have become hot commodities. First, you might be wondering, how flammable is hand sanitizer? To get an idea of any liquid's propensity to burn, you have to look at what's called the flash point. That's the temperature at which the liquid gives off enough vapor to ignite in air, a solution that's 70% ethanol or isopropanol, which is pretty standard for hand sanitizer, has a flash point of about 63 to 64 degrees Fahrenheit, below most room temperatures, meaning it only needs an ignition source, like a flame from a candle, to ignite. Here's Guy Colonna, director of NFPA's Engineering Technical Services Division, with more. The materials that you're talking about, these um, the either ethanol or isopropanol are the two most common um, alcohols that are part of these alcohol-based um, hand rubs. They tend to have, as you said, a flash point somewhere in that 60 to 70 degree Fahrenheit, um, roughly maybe about 20 degrees Celsius. And so consequently, that puts them right, essentially right at room temperature, which means they don't need any external heat source um, to cause them to actually give off those vapors. Once those vapors concentrate in those right proportions of fuel vapors with the oxygen in the air, then the only thing that's missing in order to make them ignitable is a viable ignition source. Now that you know this stuff is pretty flammable, you might be wondering, do I have to worry about using it? The answer, simply, is no. As public health experts from groups like the CDC have said, using an alcohol-based hand sanitizer is a suitable alternative to hand washing when protecting yourself from things like COVID-19, and that's way more important than worrying about your hands spontaneously combusting. The small amounts you would use, coupled with your warm skin temperature, means the liquid would evaporate quickly anyways, no longer posing a flammability threat. That said, storing hand sanitizer, especially in large quantities, does pose a fairly significant fire risk. Once you get into amounts over 5 gallons, your storage quantity would fall under the requirements of NFPA 30, Flammable and Combustible Liquids Code. The code outlines protection measures for safe storage of liquids like hand sanitizer, such as placing them in a flammable liquids cabinet or in an area protected by an automatic fire sprinkler system. What we're seeing during this pandemic is a lot of hand sanitizer being stored in places you might expect, like hospitals, but also in places that haven't traditionally stored such flammable liquids. A Tennessee man, for example, made headlines in March for having stockpiled almost 18,000 bottles of hand sanitizer, with the hope of price gouging buyers desperate for the product. We've also seen lots of breweries and distilleries across the country convert their production facilities from making booze to making hand sanitizer. While these facilities are accustomed to storing alcohol-based solutions, they typically aren't storing solutions with as high of a percentage of alcohol as hand sanitizer. Again, here's Guy with an overview of a concept known as change management. Um, they may have introduced things that they that compromise previously put in place protections. And, and uh, in, in the uh, chemical processing world, in terms of uh, safety processes and safety management and things like that, there's a term called change management. And what that, uh, in essence, says is that anytime you're going to change the equipment or you're going to change the materials that you're using or change the processes or change the protection strategies that you have, you should go back and reevaluate um, your original strategy to see that if this, what you're going to be doing new hasn't compromised those things in an unintended way. 
Well, that's it for this month's episode. If you're looking for more content on fire, life, and electrical safety as it relates to the coronavirus pandemic, visit nfpa.org slash coronavirus, where you'll find an extensive collection of blogs, fact sheets, white papers, videos, and podcasts. That link is in the description of this video, as well as a link to a blog post that includes my full interview with Guy Colonna. Thanks for watching. If you like these Learn Something New videos, let us know by leaving a comment or liking the video. Be sure to share it with your friends and subscribe to NFPA's YouTube channel for more content like this. Thank you.